Dear students, welcome to this online edition to the teaching material. What I'm going to do here is to cover something on simulated maximum likelihood for those, those of you that are doing this in uh, the seminar paper and also perhaps relevance uh, just out of general exam uh, interest. So I'm going to start by talking a little bit about uh, theory and then I'm going to switch over and do some MATLAB and talk about how we implement these things. But just briefly to review what the problem we're talking about is, we're willing to assume a density for, the, for yi conditional on xi and ci that splits up like this. So in other words, when, once we condition on ci, then we've conditioned on enough dynamics in y. Okay, so if we want to look at the density for the full distribution of y conditional on x, then it factors out over i because each individual is independent. But this one doesn't factor out over t because we haven't conditioned on c because it's not in our data set. So we cannot move further along this avenue. Fortunately, however, we're saved because we can use the law of iterated expectations to write it out like this, so that the density of y conditional only on x uh, can be written as this expectation over c that we've talked about in the classes. So that's nice because and that means that when we put these two together we can write out the full distribution like this and this guy in here in the middle you've already that's what we're willing to assume factors out over t. Okay. So I'm going to move forward now and pick this equation to the next slide here. So it, what I'm saying here is that once we've conditioned on C, we're willing to assume that this thing factors over T. So let's insert that. looks like this. Okay. And this is what we're willing to make assumptions on. This is what we can compute. Now, the remaining uh, problem, though, is that uh, we still need this integration out over C or the expectation. So as we talked about, there are two ways we can use quadrature or simulation, and I'm going to talk about simulation here. So when we use simulation, we swap the expectation with an average over some draws. Looks like this. Now we have an average over R draws, capital R, draws of CR where each of these CRs is a uh, nor standard normal with a, a variance of sigma C squared. So now we're actually good to go. This thing we can compute, we can think of this thing over here as just a number that we need to compute in MATLAB. So let's call it phi. So in other words, in order to compute the likelihood, we need to do product over i average over the sample draws, product over t, and then of this thing where, for example, in, uh, where it, it's the density and uh, in the case of OLS, it takes this particular form where we, it's, um, we have these residuals here, y minus x minus c, and then it's the normal Gaussian density evaluated at these guys. So one over square root two pi sigma squared exponential of this thing here. So that's the, the, the Gaussian density that we know and love. So the steps involved in doing integration by simulation that you'll need if you do random effects estimation is that you first draw R values of C. Then you calculate this thing here, the phi, which is evaluating your density at the drawn value of C and the Y and X. And then you return the average of the product of these guys. Okay, so I'm going to switch over now and show you how we do this in MATLAB. In the exercise classes for week 10, um, you have the exposed code. So there's the uh, LLCONT, which does it, except that it's with uh, where one of the betas and not, one of the, uh, not the intercept. I'm going to talk, uh, so, so you can look at this at your own leisure and you will see that it does what we talked about. So there's a loop over uh, individuals and it picks out all of the observations pertaining to that individual um, by picking out these indices and then picking out the values of y and x. Then it draws betas. Um, so that's the same as drawing the c uh, over here. 
this draw step. And then it evaluates the feasible density. And finally, it does an average and a product. And then because we want to return the log likelihood. Um, but we could uh, end up summing over these. But you see the product and then the average afterwards. And that's what happens here in the code. So the only really tricky part here is the feasible density. And I want to show you now a simpler way of doing the feasible density, which will be slower, but perhaps easier to understand. So I've written up this code LLCONT slow that I'm going to take you through. First, it packs out parameters, same as in the other one, and it initializes this, the, the return LLI. And then I'm going to unwrap the code here in a little bit. It loops over i, and then for each i, it draws the betas. So in this case, it's just a normal with, uh, so it has uh, some uh, uh, mean and a standard deviation. So for the c, this one would be zero, and we'd be estimating the sigma. So here it draws the betas, then it initializes um, something here, which we'll see in a second. Then for each simulation, so each of the betas, we loop through this vector of beta draws, which we've taken capital R off, and we take one of them here. And then for all time periods, we first pick out the data. So this is yit and xit. It's, and this is how to get to that data. So it's at the teeth place, and we have to jump across capital T observations at the time. And then we calculate the feasible density for the ith individual at time t at simulation draw r. We give them yit, xit, and the beta, uh, and then the other parameters which are not uh, random, and the standard deviation of the, the error term. And let me show you how this density looks. It calculates the residual here y minus x beta, so to speak. And here, this is the random parameter. So if, if it had been a, a c, then this one would not be there. And it evaluates the density, which is this thing here, standard Gaussian density. And now we've computed FITR. So FITR corresponds to this phi here. So now we do the product over time, and then we take the average. So let's see how that looks. We update FIR as whatever it was before, it's initialized at 1, times what we've computed here. So that does the product, 1 at the time. And then every time we've looped through an entire sequence of t, we move on with, uh, we're done with this simulation, this r. So we take uh, whatever fi was before and we add 1 over r times fir. So that's doing this averaging here. And finally, once we're done with all the r, capital R simulation draws, we know what the likelihood value with is it's just the log of this uh, average thing here the log likelihood sorry and that's uh, that's the end of that uh, code okay and so if you go to week 10 x post exercise 3 and you run this stop i've just stopped it after it's set up theta 0 then you can evaluate ll cont of theta 0 It's a vector. So let's do the sum of the negative value. That'll give us the sum of, so that's the, the positive, so the likelihood. And then we can do the same for the, for the slow version that I've showed you. And what you can see is that it, it really takes a long time to compute it. So it's perhaps easier to understand it like this, but it takes a long time. So the reason why LLCONT is faster is that there's only one loop so all of the loops in MATLAB are really slow and it only has one here 
So that speeds up things quite a bit. But it means that in order to be able to do it in just one loop, you have to vectorize the ob operations, and that's kind of complicated. And that's what this rep matting does, and here we multiply it by a vector of ones, and um, and these things will sort of allow us to work on vectors instead of working uh, in a triple nested for loop. And that's why this LL cont is so slow. So I've written up a more even more general version of this called neg LL general. Um, and in this one, um, which I'll upload and you can look at it at your own leisure, you have the same thing that the, the density down here uh, is evaluated given y and x beta and, and a c. In this case it's c and not a, a, a beta that's random. But the I idea here is to try and work with reshaping instead of rip matting and that's much faster. But it makes it even more complicated perhaps to understand what's going on. But I'll upload the code and you can look at it at your own leisure. But basically what it's doing is it evaluates here for every i, for every t, for every r, it evaluates the density, so that's this thing here. And then the matrix is set up in a, in a clever way so that we can do the product over one dimension and reshape. So now we've done the product over t, and then we have just the dimensions n and r left. And then we can do a reshaping again of this and we can sum over the second dimension and then we get something that's n by 1 which is what we want in the end. So this will be even faster because there's no rep matting involved. But I'll upload this code and I won't talk about it uh, here. You can look at it for yourself. So thanks for paying attention and good luck on your projects.